The way that I create calming and supportive environments for my clients is by asking them where they feel the most safe. Sometimes people will go into an experience that's meant to be a relaxation experience and depending on the facilitator, the person in the class or in the retreat or in the room may not feel as safe as you think. And something that I'm really intentional about is one, asking for consent before I do anything in a class. And I don't mean just touching people, I mean like saying certain things to them. Secondly, I ask people to do a check-in to ask themselves if they feel safe. Because if someone's in a heightened sense of stress, the last thing that you wanna do is offer them something that's actually going to make them stress even more or make them spiral essentially if they're having like a heightened anxiety or panic attack. What makes me feel safe is different than what makes you feel safe. And granted, there's some things that are relatively universal that we think like calming lighting or calming music or using a calming tone of voice might be helpful, but you never really know someone's deeper story unless you've worked with this person for like an extended period of time or you've had time to do a lot of discovery so you know a little bit about their background. But sometimes you'll be in a space as a coach or a teacher or a guide or facilitator and you know nothing about the people in the room. And it's important for you to recognize that even inviting a person to pause long enough to ask themselves, do I feel safe? And then moving on to the next thing will actually help you to create a calming and supportive environment because it's only in calming and supportive environments where people start to feel more vulnerable and start to feel a little more courageous to be vulnerable because it's sort of counterproductive if you think you're going to coach someone into exploring deep traumas or challenging experiences from their background if you haven't first ensured their safety. And there's no better way to measure whether or not a person feels safe than to simply ask. Coaches are often in the practice of being so quick to offer their method or their idea or their methodology or their step five or step two or 26 step success to blah, blah, blah. And they don't spend a lot of time asking people, how can I support you? What do you actually need? And most importantly, do you feel safe? So I encourage you to do that. Coaches, teachers, facilitators, and guides. Peace, y'all.